Hi, um, good afternoon. My name is Ashish. I'm 29. I'm an HR professional. I currently work with Google. I take care of um, hiring there. And I'm also a part-time entrepreneur. If you saw Shark Tank season two, we were featured there. I am also a part-time drag queen. I am also a part-time awesome person, as you can see. <laughs> Great. So to take you to 1994, 1st of December, in a shady government hospital, I was born. And that was the day I knew I was gay. Everyone asks me, when, when did you know? How did you know you're gay? I'm like, we are born this way. We are not, we don't become gay one certain day. We're born this way. But maybe there's a realization that happens. One day, um, I told everyone in my school that, hey, Prithik Roshan is so attractive. He's the best person out there. I didn't know that everyone would start making fun of me for that. I didn't know I'd be bullied just because I loved someone. And um, I realized that, okay, there's probably something wrong with me. I started questioning myself that, hey, why am I in love with a man, but all the other boys around me are in love with women? I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought there's a disease. I thought maybe I'm born in the wrong country. Maybe in the US there are people like me who, where there are men who like men regular name calling all of that would happen on a daily basis I stopped going to school for a bit one day I just realized that hey why am I doing this if I'm walking down a dark street there are dogs barking should I go entertain the dogs or should I just focus on my path I realized that okay let's just channel all that hatred into my studies so I made sure I scored 90% every time I would put all that hatred into my studies but two months before the exams I get jaundice I'm in the hospital and my mom is crying. That Luckily, I had these two girls who came to me every day after school. They taught me that, hey, this is what we covered today. I somehow managed to get 90%. Then come the 12th boards. Right before the 12th boards, I really felt uncomfortable. I was like, why is everyone making fun of me? I wanted to take up dance as a subject in school. My school people told me that dance is for girls. You have to take electrical gadgets. So unfortunately, I was forced to take electrical gadgets when I wanted to dance. I wanted to talk to someone about it and luckily for me, there were three girls who came to me who told me that, hey Ashish, we did some research and as per our research, Tim Cook is gay, Ricky Martin is gay. So you have some confidence that, okay, there's nothing wrong with me. So I, next day I went to school, everyone started calling me, Chakka Hijra, all of that started happening again. I'm like, no, I'm gay, I'm not Chakka Hijra, let me educate you, let me tell you the difference between them. You are the one who is uneducated, I will educate you. But unfortunately, they were not listening to me. I wanted to tell someone in my home. My mom and dad would keep fighting. There was a lot of domestic violence. Because of that, my brother went into depression. So too much was happening already in my house. I did not want to talk to anyone there. I would just lock myself in the washroom and cry. I know it gets dark, but it gets much better later. Yeah. <laughs> so after the 12th standard board exam started happening, my brother moved to Bombay for his um, college. I wanted to talk to him. I was like, hey, I want to tell you something. I text message him and tell him that, hey, um, I want to tell you that I'm gay. I hope that's okay with you. And he says, cool bro. I am expecting drama. I am expecting, no, this cannot happen. How can you say something like this? But luckily he had done all his research already. He knew that being gay is fine and there's nothing wrong. So luckily he turned out to be an ally and supported me when I needed help. 12th boards, the most bizarre time of my life where um, the board, board exams begin. I give my first exam and I'm telling mom, I'm going to nail it. I'm definitely getting 95%. The next day, my parents have the biggest fight of their lives. Me and my mom decide to move out of the house. My mom is like, I want my child to have a safe environment when he's studying. I, I move in with my mother in a separate house. I focus on my studies. I'm like, let this not bother me. I will still study. I will still make sure that I score at least 90%. And I do. So I told mom, I want to go to a better college. I don't want to be in Nagpur. I come from a city called Nagpur, if you all know. And I go to Symbiosis in Pune. And I knew that if I tell people about my sexuality at college, again, the bullying will start. Again, they'll start calling me names, chakka, all of that will happen. So I started lying. And I became a professional liar for about four months of my college life. <laughs> One day, I got so fed up. I'm like, I'm just going on a date. I'm just going for a queer event. Why do I have to lie about something so simple? Something so basic, which straight people don't have to lie about. So I tell my roommate in my uh, college that, hey, um, all the parties I'm going to are LGBTQ parties. All the people I'm meeting are gay men I'm meeting online. I hope you're okay with it. He also says, cool, bro. 
again, I'm expecting drama. I'm thinking that he will say, I cannot share my room with a gay person, get out of here. But he had been uh, abroad, he was all over the world, he knew a lot of gay people, so he was totally fine with it. Next day, the whole college knows I'm gay. Unfortunately, he told everyone. But luckily for me, I didn't have to do that. And everyone in my college was super supportive. All the girls were so cool. They were like, Ashish, let's go hang out. Let's go chill. Because they just started feeling more comfortable with me. And college life was just amazing for a few years. Then came in my mother, the most dramatic part of my life again. <laughs> um, I'm in college and um, I go home for a vacation. My mom is telling me, oh, you're learning dance. Can you show me something? And I start dancing to Madhuri Dikshit. I've always seen her videos. I've always been inspired by her. And I'm like, I will dance to a Madhuri Dikshit song. She feels that something, there's something wrong with me. Why is Ashish dancing like a woman? Why is he so feminine? And she asks my brother. Unfortunately, again, my brother tells, my brother and my cousin's sister, they tell my mom that, Auntie, um, actually, Ashish is gay. That's why maybe you think he's a little feminine. He is a gay man. I hope you're okay with it. She is no less than Kiran Kher from Dostana. She is the typical Punjabi woman who is like, nee, ye hoi nahi sakta. This is not possible, especially in my house, for sure not happening. It happens outside, it happens to other people. My son cannot be gay. We start fighting every day. I go back to Pune, I'm attending pride parades, I'm wearing ghagras, I'm wearing dresses, I'm kissing a boy and putting up a picture on social media, just to make sure I put it out there that, hey, I'm a gay man. I never saw all of this on social media when I was growing up. I always thought that I was wrong. I always thought that I never saw two men kiss. I never saw a man dressed like this. I wanted to make sure that any child who's watching probably a TEDx talk on YouTube about being gay or a child who's reading the newspaper that day about a gay person makes sure that he feels comfortable. Makes, I, I wanted to make sure that he feels safe. He needs to know or she or they need to know that, hey, it, it's not your fault. You are not bimar, it's not a disease, you're absolutely fine. So I made sure I put it out there as much as I can. I'm talking on social media, I'm putting it on, on TV, I'm on newspapers, that I'm a gay man, I'll dress the way I want to. My mom flips. She's like, why are you doing all of this? You know I have family, I have relatives, what will they all say? And I'm like, mom, I will do what I want to. I would love your support, but if you are not supportive, I am very happy living, living my life the way I am. Please don't stop me from doing this. So we stopped talking for about six months. About six months later, she comes down, flies to Pune to talk to my um, faculty in the college. She's, she directly goes to all the teachers. She's asking, is Ashish doing drugs? She, is Ashish drinking every day? Is he in the right company? And my mom just... Luckily, all the teachers said Ashish is one of the brightest students we have in college. I'm surprised you even have a question like this. She had this bias. She had this assumption that people from the LGBT community are probably partying every day. They don't do a lot in life. I'm like, mom, Tim Cook, who's running Apple, is gay. The founder of ChatGPT is gay. Gay people are successful, and I will be there also. Unfortunately, in India, the only representation we had was Bobby Darling. And my mom asked me, is that what you're going to become? Everyone's going to make a joke out of you. Everyone will laugh at you. I wanted to change that. I wanted to make sure I give out a positive narrative that, hey, gay people can be successful in life as well. So we start talking to each other. Me and my mom start talking again. I introduce her to a lot of my LGBTQ friends. I introduce her to their parents as well, who have accepted them. It took her two long years to accept it. In between, she had gone to a psychologist. And this psychologist, a psycho man, tells my mom that your son is in between this line of sexuality. He's somewhere in between. If you bring him to me on time, we will pull him back to being straight. But if it's too late, he will be completely gay for the rest of his life. And my mom is convinced. She's like, okay, my son will be normal again. My son, um, she's calling me and she's like, I think you should try it out with a woman sometime. I had a word with a psychologist and he's saying that he can convert you. My brother stepped in, he sent her articles that, hey, mom, watch this movie, read this article, talk to this person. And then after two years, she finally accepted me. But I knew that a person looking like me will not get a job. I, I had colored hair, I had seven piercings on my face, I gave interviews, I was rejected six times. I thought that, is it because the way I look? I colored my hair black, I removed all my piercings, I got the next job. I was kind of surprised, I joined in the organization, 
It's a batch of 15 girls and five boys, all of us freshers who have joined this organization. And again, I start lying. Again, I start going back into the closet just to make sure no one at work finds out that I'm gay. I know of people who have been fired for being gay. I know of people who have been fired, not given opportunities just they, because they were LGBTQ. So I, I just try to make sure that no one finds out I'm gay. I try to blend in as much as I could. So I never wore something like this to work. So four months of me lying every day, make sure I don't say that I am gay accidentally as well at work. 50% of my mind was just consumed in thinking about, oh, I should not do all of this at work. Again, I start doing horribly at work. The first four months, my performance was disgusting. I was kind of surprised that why am I doing so bad at work where I thought I was a genius. I, this whole delusion I was in of being a perfect genius student was just shattered. I realized that maybe because, is it because I'm lying so much at work, I'm not being my 100% self, I'm wearing a mask every day, is it because of that? One day, the, the girls I was working with, the 15 girls, they surround me. They come next to me and they're like, Ashish, we want to ask you a question. I'm like, okay, tell me what happened. They ask me if I'm gay. I tell them, yes, I'm gay, do you have a problem with it? And they say, yes, there's just one cute boy in the office, he's gay, who do we flirt with? And they turned out to be the biggest allies I needed at work. They made sure I go for Mr. Gay India. When 2018, I went for Mr. Gay India. I did not have the money for it. It was about 25,000 rupees, which was my one month salary back then. They, these girls pitched in. They're like, we will put the money together. They gave it to me. They made sure I went there. And that itself was allyship for me because they trusted me so much. They're like, Ashish, we know you can do something. So I went there. I came second. I did not win. But when I came back, the organization also took me a little seriously. They're like, okay, maybe this person has something to do, has something to say. But my manager, you are in recruitment. Why do you look like this? You're having colored hair, you have six piercings on your face, you're wearing ripped jeans to work. What impression will it give to the candidates? I thought it was giving a killer impression that such a cool organization, it lets you be who you want to be. But no, apparently not. It's giving a very unprofessional uh, image. I started this employee resource group because after, um, after I came back from Mr. Gay India, a random, colleagues, a random person is asking me that, hey Ashish, when did you know you're transgender? I said, I don't know I'm transgender. How do you know I'm transgender? He says, oh, the girls were saying because you like men. And I realized that people here don't know the difference between gay and transgender. If this is happening to me, I'm sure this is happening to other LGBTQ colleagues of mine as well. So I make sure I start educating all of them. I start sensitizing each and everyone in the organization that, hey, this is the difference. This is what LGBTQ stands for. This is the meaning. So we start doing that. And my manager, again, has a problem with that. He's like, Ashish, your target is you have to make sure 10 of your candidates join in one quarter. You're doing 12, you're doing 13, which is great. But you're wasting so much time in your employee resource group activities. When you can do 16, you can do 17 if you don't put in that time. And I felt that, hey, I am probably protecting a lot of LGBTQ employees who are in your organization or who will come in your organization from harassment, from feeling unsafe at work. And you still focus on my targets, which I'm already overachieving. That organization was just being too much, so I decided to step out and I moved to this other organization where um, they just wanted to celebrate me. Within three months of me joining, we had a massive pride parade in the office campus and we started changing policies in six months. We made it all gender neutral and I'm like, okay, this organization really cares. This is also when my dad found out I'm gay. We did a newspaper article in Nagpur and Nagpur Times full page cover. I'm there that Nagpur boy makes the city proud after Mr. Gay India. Now he's doing all of this in life. I thought my mom would have told him. I assumed that they would have at least had a conversation about it. But after the divorce, they never spoke. So my dad calls me up and he's like, why are you doing all of this? Why do you have to tell the whole world? Because he started getting negative comments. In the society where he was staying in, some of this, his neighbors would tell him that, Chalo, mera beta to bahu la hai. Aapka beta pata kya le aega. And my dad was getting affected by it. I apologized. I'm like, sorry, dad, you have to go through all of that. But I will not stop. I will make sure if I get an opportunity to be at the newspaper, and if one queer kid is reading the newspaper that day, that person will feel safe. That person will feel seen. All he says is, I really don't care who you fall in love with, who you get married to. Maybe don't tell the whole world. You don't have to make it so public. But when I explained it to him, he totally understood. He, I remember the first time I was coming out, I thought I'm getting a heart attack. I should call an ambulance. 
because we don't know you might just slap us you might just give us a hug you might it might be the last conversation we are having because it is this way for a lot of lgbtq people so please first give that person a hug tell them that him that confidence they need that hey nothing changes at all second i want you to make sure that you are a visible ally please put it out there maybe put a sticker on your laptop maybe put a pride flag on your work desk just that will bring a smile on your lgbtq colleague's face will bring a smile on any family member that you might have third what i want you to do is maybe add your pronouns everywhere on your email signature on your linkedin profile on your instagram profile in sri chopra i identify as a man so my pronouns are he and him it also tells the world that hey i know what pronouns are i respect my pronoun these are my pronouns i will make sure that i create this safe space around me so that everyone can talk about their pronouns make sure you use all gender inclusive terms like hello everyone welcome here hello people hello folks everyone sitting here don't use ladies and gentlemen don't gender anything like this also maybe have a gender neutral washroom there is so much organizations can do i could write a book on it but today yeah definitely some more tips i would give you is first don't crack jokes about the lgbtq community it is not cool it is not okay we are in 2023 very recently rv malhotra a cute little boy from faridabad committed suicide because every day he was bullied every day he was made fun of for being different for being a little feminine for being uh, slightly different so just by not cracking jokes if you are saving a life you're a hero yeah so don't crack jokes about the lgbtq community but watch lgbtq content have discussions with your family members watch it with your kids even if they are 7 8 years old that is the right age to tell them about the lgbtq community your son will not become gay if he sees a gay movie your daughter will not become a lesbian if she watches a lesbian movie so please watch content with them have discussions tell them that hey a man man and a child is also a family a woman woman and a child is also a family a woman and a child is also a family tell them that a concept of family is very different now it's not just a man woman and a child it can be anything at all so please have conversations with your child first try to understand if they are getting bullied at school maybe they are not talking to you bullied if they are not lovely make sure that they don't bully someone else all people from the lgbt community want to, is equal rights if you all can get married i want to get married if you can easily have kids i want to have kids i'm not saying i'll pay less tax because i'm gay i am just saying that hey just give me what you have that's all people from the lgbt community want and all i want you all to do today is give me an applause thank you <laughs>